Welcome to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. We have a lot to cover today on this edition. We haven't seen you in a little bit. We hope everybody is doing well. Joining me to my left, we have Tom Smith. Welcome back, Tom. Phil Healy, also in the Phil Healy seat. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it weren't my seat. That's yeah. right. That's right. We have assigned seats on the program. I too, yeah. Yeah. So. We have a lot to cover, like I said. This is a very exciting time if you're a Boston sports fan because, as you know, we're in the city of champions. We don't lose, first of all. And there's every single sports team, basically, is playing. No knock on the revolution, but we have the Red Sox that are in the American League Championship Series, and they're up against the Houston Astros. We have the New England Patriots who just had a thrilling win on Sunday night against the Chiefs, which were the best team in football at the time. We also have the Bruins, who are really rolling right now. Then you have opening night from the Celtics last night. So we have, a, we have a lot to cover in a half an hour. So we'll try our best to get all of that covered for you. We're going to lead off our conversation here with the Red Sox. They deserve to be talked about first. They are in the playoffs, as you know. We're in um, the American League Championship Series against a very good Houston Astros team. We're going to do a little bit of a recap here on what Phil, myself, and Tom think of the series so far. Let's open up with Tom. So just so our audience know, we are at now going into game four. The Red Sox have a 2-1 series lead. How do you feel? I mean, Porcello going in game four, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Yep. Um, but first, I just want to say JBJ. Uh, Jackie Bradley. <laughs> my, Jackie, my buddy. Jackie Bradley Jr., you know. Nick, Nick's favorite player of all time on the Red Sox here. Um, but, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good right now. The bats, the bats are seeming to have started to go again. Yep. Um, I feel like there's a good matchup tonight going with Charlie Morton and Rick Porcello. And Charlie Morton for the Astros hasn't pitched in, I think it's three and a half weeks. Yep. Oh, really? And he's only and he pitched three innings that oh. the last time. He's been pitched. pretty good for the year, right? He was 13 good and three. The year. He yeah. had a little bit of a struggle towards the end of the season. He had a terrible September. Yeah. So with the injured, is that why they a little are? bit of an injury right yeah. there? So we'll have to see how too much that goes tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was hanging with David Price too much. Go. Um, well, he's got to get back to doing Reiki on in the bullpen. Or whatnot. That was amazing from last night. There was a shot that showed That's David great. Price raking in the pen, and I just want to say that he just makes that profession look totally him. I mean, yeah. that that's a great spot for him. No one does it there. better. No. Um. Before we jump into talking about the preview here of Game 4, I want to backtrack a little bit and just, first of all, have our thoughts on that Yankee series, which was the first time in a division series. Kind of weird that the Red Sox-Yankees were playing each other. And so, yeah, the first time. When someone said that yeah. to me, I was like, oh, that's insane. Yeah, and that was the first time the Red Sox-Yankees had played each other since, of course, 2004. And we all yeah. know how magical that was. <clears throat> yeah, that was nuts, too. Oh, um, Going into the series, I felt very confident that the Red Sox could get the Yankees. Uh, there, there was a lot of uh, doom and gloom, though, surrounding the team because the Red Sox the past couple years, in 16 and 17, it's been early exits in the playoffs, early exits. So the goal here was to obviously get through the next series, get to the championship. The ultimate goal was still a champ uh, World Series. Um, if you reflect back on the series against the Yankees, what stood out to you the most? Is there a certain um, player, a moment? Uh, uh, what stood out to you most? I mean, this 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 team, the team this year, it's you can't really pick one certain player. I mean, I was saying I was saying to my dad last night that the um, that the dugout just looks like a completely different dugout from the past four or five years. Yeah. Um, they look like a completely different team. They look like they enjoy. Being around each other, they look like they pl like uh, enjoy playing with each other. One thing that did stand out to me that I think turned the whole series around was Aaron Judge walking down the tunnel playing New York, New York. Did you see that, Phil? I uh, heard about it. it. I didn't actually yeah. see it, but it was in Cora's response to that was pretty great. You know, these actually. teams, I know they're not really trying to deliberately cause any more bulletin board material on, yeah. for a team. But let me tell you, between them quite Aaron good. Judge with the boom box, mm -hmm. between Alex Bregman with um his with, instagram with his posts, instagram yeah. stuff about the uh of all the home runs and stuff going on it's just not a good look they need to stop 
I mean, if they can back it up, that's great. Right. But if it, you know, it's just that whole but thing. But if it turns into you walking down the yeah. tunnel with a boombox on your shoulder playing was your team. Was it teams. a boombox? Yeah, it was a boombox. Like, it was like old, yeah. like 80s, like, yeah. let's go. And yeah, then and then the Red Sox come back in the next game in Yankee Stadium and put up 16 yeah. runs. <laughs> that was crazy. That was like, and that's another, well, who hit? Yeah, it was uh, Ben Attendi had a, that great, like, triple pretty much, yeah. right, down the line. The key for me for, for the whole Yankee series from everything, when it was one-to-one, really, I mean, we needed to win three games from it. Nathan Evaldi, I mean, holy smokes with this guy. Yeah. We knew he was good when we got him from Tampa. You know, he had a couple good games. Then it kind of got dicey a little yeah. bit. There was a little bit of tip in the pitches. There was a little bit of getting out of the rhythm of the success he was having. Pedro came in and worked with him a little bit. No, oh, was there? About really? That. Yeah, Pedro no, fixed I didn't. a couple mechanical no. issues. And I love on. him on TPS. And, and he is the best. <laughs> Pedro, 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 Pedro was a saint, as we oh, know. Pedro yeah. Pedro's Ortiz. good on TBS, but did you, did you see uh, David Ortiz's reaction to JBJ's Grand Slam? Oh, no. if you haven't seen no, that, folks, to, right, you need to go to Twitter. To you need to find something. You can even go to my personal Facebook page if yeah. you like. One and of the you can go take a look ever. at the reaction for Ortiz last night on Fox, the network, uh, with just the ex- the oh, amount he, of emotion that he showed he with Jackie Bradley hitting that, gun, hitting that grand with, slam. Oh, yeah, good. he's with the Fox. He's too, with Fox. Yeah. Pedro's with TBS. Oh, I'd love to so, get those guys together. Wouldn't it be <laughs> awesome, too? <laughs> that would be great. Like, Ness and like, hello, like, get on the phone and get them over. I mean, I, I like Sheffield, well, too, actually. It, actually yeah, it's really it's like great, because last night they were like, uh, the whoever, um, I forget the guy's name, the host on, the MC on the uh, TBS one, but was saying, oh, we all know why you picked the Red Sox to win this series, Pedro. But I don't know about you two. And Gary Shashi was like, well, you should, you should know why I didn't pick them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's him. You should have an idea. Something with their bullpen and their outfield fans. Isn't it incredible, though, from this whole reflecting on the postseason from everything? Has it really been about Chris Sale? Has not really been about David Price, as we know? He can, still can't win a... But he did. I will give, like, I know a lot of people won't. Want to give him too much credit, but game two wasn't bad. Like he didn't give us a bad game two. He didn't oh. blow up. It wasn't terrible. It oh. was baby steps, as he said. I'm baby sure, steps yeah. kept him in the game to win. Maybe but sh- your X factors have been Avaldi, Porcillo, Brock Holt, mm-hmm. Steve your bench Pierce, guys, really. yeah, Nunez. Your bullpen. Yeah. Your bullpen, Crazy. who I have <laughs> yeah. absolutely torn apart. Torn them apart. Rip them a new one on they're not ready for the postseason. They're not good enough to get there. Well, you know what? I, I'll gladly sit back and just enjoy every moment that you're doing. Brazier has 15.1 scoreless innings. He's turned really yeah. turned around since the Yankee series. Oh. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first Matt game Barnes could. having control of a curveball. Yeah. Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly's been pretty good. This Who did he turn into? I don't know. There's only one question mark in that bullpen and right that now. And that is Craig Kimbrell. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, you know, Norcam Jason and I would always discuss, and I've said on this very program, he scares the hell out of me. Yeah, he, he does. gives me heart palpitations. If like the no game other. is 3-2 to two tonight and yeah. the Red Sox have the lead, do you feel confident with him coming in? Nope. I don't. Jason, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's the no, he down. just left the building, just yeah. so you know. Um, that's a concern. Yeah. And he, I, don't I think, think they can get away with it. Sure. Because I think the team is good enough offensively to give them more than enough runs to be able to be okay. Do you think this game four will be like, I think it will be another three to two. I don't. Well, I don't. I don't. Yeah, really? I, don't. I think Porcillo will give up two runs, probably the max right there. But I think oh, the really? Red Sox may All get right. six. I'm thinking six or seven runs I, again. I, I'm, seeing, right. I'm seeing J.D. and Mookie doing some big stuff tonight. Yeah. Well, they've been, they've been, JD, they've been quiet. J.D. Well. is due well, JD had a, to explode. A, but he had a double like the first inning. Yes, he did. Good. Yes, he did. Um, but that was, it. That, that was it. that was it. We're <laughs> also going to see crazy, um, yeah. Brock Holt tonight in the lineup. He'll oh, be at right. second base. Thank You're also going to see Devers at third. Devers. Which, again, <laughs> you want Nunez or Devers. I feel if Nunez comes in, he's going to get hurt like he always yeah. does. I feel like Nunez needed a couple games off. I feel like it's time to put him back in. Uh, I think he's over the whole. Nunez played last night. He did. He did. Yeah. He but did. They put Devers in. And then in Dev- he got oh, hurt, yeah. and then Devers yeah. came in. Did he get oh. hurt, or is Devers like got a hit? I was. I was at. Oh, pi- no, they, yeah. I was at pickleball, so oh. I missed the beginning yeah. of the game. Well, I think yeah, he 
Well, he got hurt, hurt, or he like he was like they took him out late because like yeah, give him. Yeah, a I think that's what they did. Yeah. Um, and then I think you'll see Vasquez catch for this evening's game. All right, I've been liking the him. only one I think that you're going to see with Leon coming into is going to be Sale. Oh, I think okay. that's the only one that we're going to see because we saw game two with Price mm. Vasquez caught, and we also have seen with Porcillo that he's comfortable with either three. I so, guess Sandy Leone was his guy, though. It was. Porcillo, but then it they're was. like, nope, you're going with Vasquez. But you got to like, play. Oh, right. I mean, I'm not real happy with either of them, but I'd rather play Swihart. Vasquez, I mean, they've both been defensively pretty good, but the bat, I mean. The well, bat's shit. Vasquez's bat has been okay in the postseason, yeah. I'll say. He's got yeah. some home it's runs not, and everything. Yeah, but. it's not the best. That, or my buddy called it a pop fly. A yeah. New York Yankees pop fly. Hey. Yeah, hey, you know what? It's run. going yeah, to run. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, no, and I looked at their lineup. I'm like, oh, wow, these guys are they're chock full of power hitters. I'm like, oh, no, that's why. They all have 30-plus home runs. Do we all feel, after last night's game, it's good to be anybody's series, remember. I mean, we're all it's flying high one. today. Only we feel one. good about ourselves, but... On a positive spin of things, let's say the Red Sox do happen to lose tonight. That's still okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not the biggest of problems there. The series still has to go back to Fenway Park. I personally think that that's a huge advantage to the Red Sox. You won that game that you needed to on the road at least. You could win two games at Fenway Park, I feel. You know, yeah, they have, they've, been, they've been fairly <clears throat> decent, I mean, at Fenway Park. But... I think that that's a huge advantage for it's the Red Sox. It's a big advantage. We have the the green monster. I mean, there's there's a lot there are a lot of bounces at Fenway Park that don't happen at any other baseball field or baseball stadium. I so, say. even even though the series isn't done, it's still two more games we need to win. Okay, it's anybody's series. I I feel I feel more confident right now in the Red Sox getting to the World Series. Than I did 04, 07, and even 13. Just from oh, really? just just from what I see with the team. Yeah. And it's pretty clear what you can see. You can see the camaraderie. You can see the picking each other up when down. You can see when their backs are up against the wall, they play their best. You see more talent from this team than 13. And you see a manager. Who the players absolutely will throw anything during a series at. Well, plus you have Dustin Bedroya, basically the assistant manager. Alex Cora has made yeah, that's, I mean, that's every a ounce of a difference this season made to a lot this of Red good, Sox yeah. team. There's, there's, I mean, they, I, yeah. Single most important move of the offseason was Alex Cora. Yeah. You can say it was J.D. Martinez all you want. Oh, I mean, it was a pretty big one. That was a huge yeah, one. It was pretty good. But we, we did Alex say Cora, that J.D. Martinez was the best move the Red Sox made in a while. Right. right? For, <laughs> a player, for a player, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. it is. I'm just saying, managing-wise, if John Farrell was still the manager of this team right now, this team would be done. Yeah, possibly. Done. Or, or they would be swept in this in this series. Yeah. I think you might have had enough talent. Because last year you didn't have that cleanup hitter per se. Yeah. I, I mean, if John Farrell was the manager, I don't think the Red Sox would have won 108 games. No, they would not have. And they no. would not have been playing the no. Yankees in the nope. ALDS. Nope. Well, that was a good point, actually. Yeah. Nope. He would have nope. been uh, Cleveland, possibly. Probably. Could have been. Yeah. Yep. Or Could've Houston. Been. Yeah. Now, I have to ask you what your thoughts are about, there was a story that came out during the game oh, about, about a, the... Um, not, the, not the, it was a cheating scandal that was brought up. Yeah, yeah, I don't know Houston, if any of you got a chance to read it or talk it. about I've it heard. or stuff. I've heard about it. You, what are your thoughts on, on that whole business? Oh, I mean, it, Cora just being like, oh yeah, we, we tried to take as many advantages as we did. Let's, let's see if they try that stuff with us. Yeah. And maybe, you know. Man, Do you think it's a did. big deal? Oh no, not as much. I think okay. it's just anything. I mean, cheating us, and, and, and t- t- having an advantage in the game, stealing signs and stuff has been a part of the game for over 100 years. Oh, yeah, and I think it's, I mean, I mean people call the home run herd around the world. They thought Bobby Thompson was stealing signals yep. for that from the, um, which is one of my favorite radio calls of all time, if yep. anyone wants to look it's it up. It's an amazing call. It's great. Yes. It's one of, it's, I love radio announcers because they always sound like they're on fire. And they um, always... Tom, you can go ahead and tell the audience about. Oh. Tom ended up coming to my house um, after one of our programs oh, was to done watch. yesterday. Well, and, no, I just, um, uh, just I need to talk to him about something. But we so uh, all this postseason, uh, Nick's been listening to the radio announcers because he can't stand the TV commentators. <laughs> yeah, CBS guys. And yeah. I mean, I agree with him. I it's hard. I mean, watching the Patriots game Sunday night. 
Chris Collinsworth makes my ears bleed. Oh, really? I'm sorry, <laughs> but but I, I I would take Tony Romo over Chris Collinsworth oh, I love any to, day. I love week. Tony Romo. Tony Romo has been pretty good. I like a good broadcaster. Um, I don't you know, believe in miracles? Well, but also yes. just he seems insane. But he also seems like he could be a nice. I mean, I like Collinsworth. I like and I like Al brother. Michaels, but I don't. I can't stand him. Can't. I like Mike Tirico, my favorite for football broadcasters. I have to say. Oh, really? I do. Oh. Yep. Uh, now that he's play by play, yeah, 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 as yeah. a color, Tony Romo. Yeah, I mean, because what play by play they have Jim Nance is oh, his. Please, <laughs> he's a, like he's a, he, but he's just he's very bland. He's so but that's, phony. Yeah, but that's his. That's what he has to like. I, if he were gonna go out and do his own his real mm. thing, he'd be like, "Well, it's ten drinks in, and let's mm. see what we got here. We're at the ten. You ever I, seen a picture of his backyard, Jim Nance? By the way, is it full of graves? No, no, it's no. not full of graves. No, it's full. Of, we're it's at. a it's a nine hole. Golf course. Oh, I'm sure he's got enough yeah. money for oh, that. Oh, sure. Like, I don't. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah he's amazing. Only been doing this for Little years. pitch and pot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, he used to actually do, and I think he still does, like the open and stuff. He like does. That. Yeah, he does. I think it was in he does Happy do Gilmore. Stuff too. I think I forget. Yeah. Uh, um, he was in one of the golf movies. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're right. He was in Tin Cup, I think. Tin Cup. I think he was in Tin Cup. He was in one of them. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry that I know Tin Cup. I do just want to say though, from what I see with the Red Sox from everything, I feel I feel good good enough and. I feel good about the team as of right now. Anything can happen, but my expectation is to see the Red Sox in the World Series. If they beat it's a Houston, bold statement, but no, I mean, if it, I don't think, I mean, from what we've seen this postseason, I think that's fair. And do you think whoever wins in the NL, what do you think our chances? Uh, we have easily. That. You think? Well, easily. yeah, that seems to be consensus. It's, I, I mean, I personally want the Brewers. Yeah, the Brewers. I, not, I am man? disgusted with the Dodgers. With not not oh, with yes, the Dodgers no, as an organization. It's Manny Machado, and I need oh, to I need to throw my rant that's out today. Been a thing Any person <laughs> in this <laughs> area <laughs> who is a fan of Manny Machado, I'm going to ask to leave the state of Massachusetts. I'm just going to ask them. Just pack your bags. Just get lost now. There is no room. There is no need. There is absolutely. No way that Major League Baseball can allow Manny Machado to not be suspended, fined, or whatever from his disastrous, classless, impulsive behavior that he has as a Major League Baseball player. Was he this crazy with the Orioles? I forget. He is a nothing but a thug punk. Yep. He needs I'm sure to be, he has something uh, he needs to be, uh, he can he, attach he, to that He thuggery. should not be playing Major League Baseball. I mean, okay, I've seen enough of Manny What's Machado. He's the reason, one of the reasons why Dustin Pedroia is still not playing. Oh, that's right. Did he... Uh, a year ago when yeah, he took he out his knee going his into knee. second base right. and he that's spiked right. him. That's right. In case some of you did not see what happened last night against the uh, Brewers, what ended up happening was uh, he's running down the line and he's trying to deliberately trip... Um, Jesus Aguilar, the first baseman for the Brewers, and hurt him. To deliberately try and hurt a player from something so stupid, I, I, I'm amazed at this point right now today that we do not hear a report from Major League Baseball suspending this guy indefinitely for his behavior. I mean, they might give him something, but I don't Am think Am I being do too it. strong on it? Eh, maybe. Uh, you're always strong. I am always strong. <laughs> but I'm the strongest one here. Um... Whoa, I'm, fairly, I'm fairly weak, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, there's no competition there. Um, what do you think about it? I mean, I'm going to share my thing. I've never liked Machado. I never will like Machado. He's a punk in my eyes. I've never been a fan of Machado either, and I just think that is the worst po possible thing that you could do in a postseason game, mm -hmm. just so you don't get out, of, or just so you try not to get out first. Very A Rod like. It was well. I think it was worse. I would say it's much worse. I mean, it was very. A Rod wasn't looking to. Hurt someone though, you know. It what was. I mean? It I was. Think he was trying to take someone's purse when he. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, he was trying to get the ball out of the mid. He it wasn't was very to similar to it, yeah. but it was much, definitely much worse. And much it's more it's something I would expect from Manny Machado. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, it it happened last year with when he was on the Orioles when he took out Pedroia, and now Pedroia probably doesn't have a career anymore. Mm -hmm. No, hopefully he becomes a bench coach. I mean, but yeah, I would no. like to see him on the bench. I mean, like a, a playing career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. I didn't mean to cut you out like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm not as. I'm vaguely familiar with Machado from his Orioles days. Mm -hmm. And just his numbers and as like a, a hitter, I think he's great. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like. And maybe he's doing it for uh, LA and maybe he isn't as crazy over there, but this kind of incident 
you know, I don't know what else, because it was the mid-season, or was it trading line? It was, was a trade deadline uh, So it's like late yeah. July, right? Yeah. Or mid or late July, that's like... I think it was uh, about mid July. He yeah. was he was early on his on the deal that was there. So that's there. kind of a little a little past uh, halfway point. Yeah. So and he's been. I mean, and that was one of the guys they were thinking of bringing here at one point, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, who knows? I mean, he if he does stuff like that all the time, then yeah, forget him. But I mean, he seems to be working for. I mean, seems to be working for the Dodgers. One of the other things, maybe you can call it a bad timing thing from his standpoint. He did an interview with um, Fox yesterday on there was a play that was um a ball in the hole and he didn't run it out hard enough didn't hustle his report back from rosenthal was he doesn't play the game like that he doesn't hustle it's not part of his game I not mean, to hustle not to not sure. to grind not to dig it out why is that i mean how is that what, acceptable? that's not a good attitude for a baseball player especially no. of his stature at least in other people's eyes obviously not in our eyes but to that's like I don't know. That's almost kind. Of, that kind of almost sounds like Manny Ramirez. Not to put Manny Ramirez in that category, but yeah, like Manny, Manny played the same like way, yeah. you know. But never came out and really said no, that. No, he never. Like, but he. I like, mean, what does what does Machado gain from saying what he did? I mean, I mean, I guess honesty, brutal honesty. But then again, attention. Yeah. But, I mean, he also could just, I mean, there's the attention of it. I mean, there's also just kind of like the bad boy attitude, I guess. Oh, but, he's a bad boy. Well, I mean, he's is, that what, he's, bad what, is that what he's trying to cultivate? Yeah. Or is that kind of like yeah. him just being an ass and not really caring? Yeah. And, or, you know, oh, he, he's a donkey, being all right, I'll tell you that. Well, he, he can hit. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, if, if he does his job that way. But I'll, not to, I don't think it's the exact same thing, but there was some, J.D. Martinez, I think, on uh, game one. Uh, the pass ball, which I didn't, when he, you know, struck out pass ball. Valid I, point. No. Valid point. I yes. Think the I know exactly what you're talking about. But the difference there, I think, and he was arguing like the he strike He was arguing three. the check swing. And and I don't think he knew it was a pass ball. No. I don't necessarily. And to JD's credit, it wasn't a strike. But the umpire did have sure. to call it. But what did it, was it a, it was yeah, a it was check a swing. swing. It was a check yeah, swing. Yeah. yeah. He called it. It was a check swing and the ball ended up being in the dirt. He didn't know it was in the dirt, no. but and he, he didn't but, run. But J.D. Martinez, the thing he, about J.D. Martinez is he doesn't argue unless he knows he's right. And no, because, I mean, But it doesn't. doesn't. And he yes, was right. I'll tell, I'll tell you that 100%. And yes, I was upset with him in the moment of not running down the first baseline, but at the same time, seeing him argue means that, yeah, it wasn't a check swing. So standing there and, not argue, and arguing it is... Just the way JD Martinez is, and he and every and he's a respectful player. He's not like Manny Machado, where he takes tries to take players out. Correct. No, and I, that's a very different. And so I, I, I think mean, I get over, I got over it after. Yeah, no, I think now. it's a whole, and you can see on his face on the uh, slow mo or the playback that he's like, oh, like he, I think he noticed that the ball was passed. Yeah, like halfway his, into was, the thing. Yeah. I'm glad that you but, brought that point up. But you can also it's make it's in the same category. Yeah, no, it's 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 in a yeah. vague. It's and I don't think we're being yeah. hypocritical of getting Manny Machado crap and not JD because I also think you can make the argument that JD should have had the wherewithal that there's a pass ball or something. But you know, True. you never know. I mean, in that case it seems like he just was like what well, he was very shocked it was called. You know, strike three. Well, because he was mad that he got called out on a check swing that was a check yeah. swing, and so his head wasn't thinking, hey, no. I should look where the ball is and instead of, hey, I'm going to argue this with the umpire because I know that wasn't a, ch- that was oh, a that check was, swing. And that ball really did go – I don't think you realize how far no. back that was. No, he would have been able to make it to first, but, hey, you know what? Yeah. The Red Sox are up two games now, so it doesn't matter. No. Well, and then it's tied in the Dodgers. Well, it Brewers. is tied. They're 2-2, two, we'll two, we're 2-1. Two, um, before we wrap up the baseball segment, do you think the Red Sox advance to the World Series? Mm-hmm. Okay. No doubt What's it going to take? How many games? I think they're going to end it in Houston. I think they're going to keep the undefeated oh, wow. on the road. Wouldn't that be something? Now, that's a valid thing. I actually am going to play it even a little bit more safe. I'm going to say they'll lose one. I don't think they're going to lose game four. Might be game five. Yeah. Um, and then they come back to Boston on game six and win. I'm kind of I'm leaning towards Tom's uh, pick. But I uh, to be safer, I think, mm. I, yeah, probably six. But I would love to see them get the next two games. Cause, Got to be bold. Well, yeah. uh, well, fortune favors the. Bold, I think that there's but. so much passion in the Red Sox clubhouse right now that they need that they feel that they got this, yeah, and they're not going to allow it to get out of their hands. 
So, Tom, you know what? You could be very right. You know, I, if I was a betting person, which I am not, I, I would bet your answer yeah. versus my answer. I'm just going to take the safe route because I don't need people saying, you were wrong. I'll be wrong if it's five games. I'll, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. I just don't think this is going seven. And I don't see Houston coming back and winning this series. I mean, they could. They're they the won champs, the... and they're really good. I just but... don't see it with the way the Red Sox are playing right now. Mm. And you can, see, you can see it in the dugout. The Red Sox want it. Mm. I mean, look at the reaction by the entire dugout after Bradley hit the grand slam last night. No, it was not. Yeah, they went absolutely insane. And I haven't seen that, bold, uh, that dugout really go insane since 2004. Yeah. I mean, it, two thousand. I mean, two thousand three was pretty amped. I will say that. Remember Koji? Yeah. Koji going nuts. Ortiz, oh, yeah. Victorino jumping up and everything. Johnny yeah. Gomes. Yeah. So the passion was there from that year. I th- this seems like another one of those storybook two thousand thirteen teams. But this team is much more talented. I will yep. say that. It is kind of crazy. It is. Um, we only have a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. We only have about five minutes here to go on oh. this show. So we want to go over a couple things as quickly as we can. I'm going to say for the Patriots, they were what one and two at one point, mm-hmm. yeah. and now they've got all the way back to four and two. In my eyes, I'm not surprised. Do you? Nope. Nope. Uh, talk to me in January. Yeah, that's like that's it seems to be. Yeah, that's. Uh, but that's the thing. Someone asked me last year. I was at this film festival in. Um, in Austin, Texas, in September, and a, a Kansas City fan mm-hmm. came up to be like, "Hey, what do you think?" And this was like the second or third week. Yeah. And it's like it was after you know Kareem Hunt had that crazy game, mm-hmm. and he hasn't fumbled since. Yeah, he hasn't. Which he, they're all good. They're Kansas City's great. But I was just, I said to him, same thing I said just now. Like, yeah, just come back to me in January. Like this has happened before. I don't. You think we'll see Kansas City again in the playoffs? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. To be honest. Well, I mean, they only have one loss now. Yeah. So most likely. Yep. And you know they could lose one. We could be at Arrowhead. Yeah. I will. I will give. I will give Patrick Mahomes credit. He is a good quarterback, but yeah. he's still a rookie, and he still has a lot. Well, to learn. you saw a goat versus a rookie in that end of the game. There, he I gave mean, Tom Brady way too much time. Well, I mean, that's the thing. That was the Andy Reid as a as a coach is a terrible clock manager. Terrible. But I don't nope. think that's his fault with that. I mean, no. he used to. I mean, he used to have the other problem where he'd spend too much time trying to score. Right. Now they can just. Lightning quick. They can just throw right. it to Tyreek Hill or if you're Jerome. I like Herman. KC. I yeah. see Patriots, KC, maybe to yeah. get to the Super Bowl with stuff. So we'll have to see on that. Tom, you must be very happy about the Bruins. Uh, I mean. Besides that first game, everything has really looked awesome for the black and gold. Yep. There hasn't been a game. Well, uh, yeah, there hasn't really been a game where they've looked terrible since the first game of the season. Mm-hmm. They start a big road trip. They open up tonight against the Canucks, I believe. Tomorrow against oh, that's Calgary. Tomorrow. Who is um, tonight? They're not playing tonight. They're they are playing. playing tonight. No, they're, they're not. They're playing at 9.30. <laughs> they're playing Calgary See, I get my tomorrow. calendar on my thing. They play tonight. Oh, they're playing Calgary tonight. Ha, 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 ha. I was right. Who's the real fan? Face the facts. Oh, no. Edmonton Oilers. Nope, they play the Flames tonight. Um... The Flames. I said Calgary. You said Vancouver, and then you said the oh, Oilers. I said Canucks. That's right. If you want to do a rewind, Wait, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. face the facts Calgary? to me. Bruins. So face the facts. Yeah. Oh, man. So the, the Bruins schedule goes the Calgary Flames tonight, 930. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock against Edmonton. Saturday will be against the Canucks. That's at 10 o'clock. And then... Tuesday, they are in Ottawa at 730, back to normal time. So, so are they like 6-1 and one right now, or is that or 5-1? Four and one. Four, four and one. one. Four and one. I went to um, the opening game at the yeah, Garden last for my Monday, ticket. Oh. and it was really a <laughs> great take. So far for hat tricks, we've seen Bergeron and Pasternak this season with them. That's right. Yeah. Very exciting for well, that. Not, not much team. else new there. I mean, that no. line being that line picked. It's like they hadn't even stopped playing. Nope. Love that first line. And Phil, your Celtics opened up last night. What do you got to say about them? Uh, I think looking sloppy, but they can play sloppy against yeah, uh, Philly. But is the key to them health this year? Stay healthy? Uh, yeah, if stay healthy. But if like start if, you clicking. Have, if you have five people that go down, yep. you'll still be pretty good. I think so, too. And uh, you have their third unit is better than most second units. Oh, sure. 
All, so, all I got to say on the that. The semi ogile unit, right? semi ogile Nick Tice. Yes. Uh, and throw in Marcus Smart in there. I mean, you yeah. literally, there's so many weird combinations you have. Oh, we're, sorry, Do you think it's going to be tougher this year for Stevens to coach than last year? As far as, like, managing yeah. people? Yeah, managing minutes and all. Maybe. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think they'll trust them. I don't know. Gordon Hayward lasted longer than two minutes. That's all I gotta say. That oh, so that means the good things will come because that means we got out of the first game without any injuries. Well, I mean, knock on whatever. We should be okay. There we go. go. No, yeah. And Joel Embiid got, it kind of got posterized in a weird way. But Uh, we love that. But did you love his post game? Thing that he I said heard. at the end, he, he said, goes that there's no there's, rivalry here. We get destroyed every time the Celtics yeah. play us. And loved it. Oh, he just I, loved it. I, I mean, talking like about him. brutal honesty right there. Oh, he's the best. Oh, he's that awesome was wonderful. For the league. He's one of the. He's a great player, and he's really funny and weird. Mm-hmm. And he's just like an odd, like yeah, whatever. Like I imagine him just crushing like rocks in front of people. And, I don't know. Just that throwing and they, that would be things. entertaining. Oh, I would. <laughs> I him just speaking to people, just like or just pointing people on the street and be like, you, I'm coming after you. Like a what? Oh, I'd I love run. that pursuit. I'd run oh, high. Why wouldn't you? I know one thing for sure. <laughs> I know. I know I have to run. Oh, we all have to run. So we will see you again, hopefully with the Red Sox coming into the World Series. Please make sure you take a look. The games are on TBS. We will see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. Good luck all to Boston sports teams. Adios. <laughs>